I wouldn't be in Lahore today if it wasn't for a friend's wedding tonight. I was at his, at his Mehndi yesterday, and it reminded me of someone. <laughs> well, yeah. Right about the time when the floodgates to the dinner table open up, there's one particular character who is fluttering from one group to another. It's your lovely, sociable auntie eyeing the young from a distance. <laughs> Before you knew it, she would pop up in front of you and ask, Assalamu alaikum, beta. How are you doing? Kahan hote ho aajkal? Kya ho hai? Your hair, your tie, your shirt, your pallu, even your shoelaces, and yeah, the fake smile. She would judge you from head to toe within an instant. And right next, she would link up how you're related. And then, trrr, she would match you up with countless potentials. <laughs> and all this happens faster than you have ever canceled a missed call. Love her or hate her, you're out in the market now, ready to be traded with a very credible reference. <laughs> I envy her. I envy that fearless mind. I envy the fearless mind who's willing to take a half-prepared product and put it in front of people just to test how they respond. There's a lot talked about it, but as a young designer, this is a skill that's barely taught in school. Different industries have different names for it. People like me in gaming call it playtesting. Software, software guys call it UAT, uh, user acceptance testing, product designers have focus groups, and then marketeers, they draw their insights from consumer behavior research. But today, I would like to talk about my experience being your lovely auntie. Well, I would give you three examples of how my team avoided death by arrogance building house ad, an online cricket game that's being played by almost half a million players every month, which amounts to about 500 years of productivity lost in a day. Some of the CEOs over here or office managers would vouch for that. The thing is, it was hard to digest when we started out, but thinking like your aunt, we figured that a lot of, uh, that if you have more features in your product, it won't necessarily make it any better. To explain this further, I would need a volunteer. Anyone over here would like to come up? I can't see you over here. Can some, someone help me pick a volunteer? Come up. Yeah, sure. Your name? Mushtaba. Mushtaba. Nice, nice to meet you. you. OK, so imagine I'm a character on the screen. <laughs> I'm go not going to hit you. Don't worry. Moen, I'll need you. Right, so I'm holding a bat in the hand. And you have a keyboard in your hand. So you want to make me hit a six down the ground. What will you press? Space key. Space key. OK. The next ball, you see a gap in the cover. And you want me to drive, it, drive through that. What will you press now? The right arrow on the space key. The right arrow on the space key, fine. OK, next ball, you tried, but you can't hit a boundary. You have to make me run. What will you press? Escape and shut down. Escape and shut down. <laughs> it's fine. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for answering. Yeah. So, I mean, like one or two keys. That's all he mentioned. Thank you for coming here. A round of applause for, for Mustafa. Well, listen to how it happened in the very first version of the game we made. You press space bar, then you have to adjust your feet to place the batsman. Then you press space again and hit the direction key to play a shot. Wait. Nothing happens because you forgot whether you had to press the X key or Z key to either drive the ball or loft the ball. And yes, to make me run, you have to whack your keyboard, the space bar, again and again so that the player moves. Not so surprisingly, 70% of the people who played the game for the first time couldn't figure out how it worked. But today, all these five steps are possible with the press of a single key. When we started out, we didn't think that things could be so, so, so simple. 
But as it turns out, when you talk to people, when you interact with people, you learn that the more features, the more options you bombard in a product or a feature, the less likely it is to be used by a human. This brings me to the, to the second ability of Rant, her ability to judge a lot of people very quickly. It is very likely that when you are building a product, the thing that you think is the most exciting about your product might not be what everyone else enjoys as much as you do. I'm a terrible batsman, but I'm an even worse bowler. But in how's that, I love bowling because using uh, pace and spin, I could make players behave like the English batsman. And it used to give me a kick. But the thing is, most of the other people like you, they had taken time out of school or work to just whack the ball out of the ground. And if I make them fumble for the ball, they would quit. And if they gave me a chance to bat and I go boom, boom on them, they would quit again. This quit, quitting, quitting business was basically killing the gaming experience. We had to do something. So what we did was whenever someone quits, an automatic baller takes over. And in the second version of the game, the bowling department has been totally handed over to the robots. So this is something we couldn't have figured out unless we analyzed a lot of people. So your ability, your experience interacting with a lot of people and then analyzing them very quickly empowers you just like your aunt to link things up. Let me give you an example over here, like when we started out, I wouldn't have thought that if our game resembled real cricket too much, it's probably not suitable for someone crouched in front of a computer screen. When we started out, the experience that we wanted to create was basically me playing cricket with my friends, like I used to on PC or console. The thing was that I was now in Singapore, my friends were in Pakistan, and all over the world. We went ahead, taking the same experience in mind, and made the game. It was a hit in offices and hostels, but it was still a painful struggle to get your friends who's living halfway across the world to want to play the game at the same time as you do. So as a player, I'm someone who's sick of stalking people on Facebook. I want a cricketing challenge, but I don't want to ball or be humiliated by a stranger. What do I do? Thing is, you play multiplayer house at cricket where I play against three other people batting at the same time. What happens is, when I'm the batsman in the middle, and I can see what other people do for ball by ball. We have five overs, and whoever makes the most runs in five overs wins. This, is, this isn't real cricket, I know. The thing is that rules of cricket in every mohalla are different. Your product, if you want to go out for the mass market, you have to make sure that, has, that it has evolved to the context it's going to be used in. So I have to rush off to a wedding soon. So if you forget everything, just remember when heading out, how many times have you pushed through a door that reads pull. <laughs> Why would an educated person do that? It's your failure as a designer to not have anticipated how people are going to use your product. So when you are building a product, venture out, interact with people, outdo your aunt. Because once that door has been designed to be pushed, Putting a pull sign over it won't fix it. Thank you. Yeah.